and welcome to today's painting tutorial which is how to paint a sunset in acrylics in three easy steps. We're going to be painting candy floss skies and clouds and looking at painting techniques such as blending, mixing colours and how to use a palette knife. So I really hope that you guys enjoy this painting tutorial. If you do, hit that subscribe button, like the video and if you comment what tutorial would you guys like the best? So leave your ideas in the comments. And anyway, let's crack on with the video and let's paint. I've also just opened up a Patreon page, so if you wanna be one of my first patrons and go and support what I do and me making videos, then go and check out the link in the description box. We're gonna keep it super simple today and we're only gonna be using three colors, which if you have any sort of painting materials, I almost promise that you will have a red, blue and a yellow. <laughs> I promise I do know my colours but I just wanted to say green for some reason and I don't have a green. Okay so we've got a crimson or you can use red whatever you've got. I'm using a cobalt blue but you can use any blue you've got and I'm using cadmium yellow light but again you can use any yellow that you have got. And for brushes I'm going to be using a range of sizes. These are the Winsor Newton Galleria range short flat bright in sizes 8, 12 and 4. And then I've got a Winsor Newton Galleria one stroke brush. So that's what I'm going to be using, but you can use whatever you've got lying around. I said I've got three colours, obviously I'm going to be using white as well, which I don't uh, count as a colour, I suppose. So anyway, let's crack on. Let's get some of this paint on the palette. I'm just using a disposable palette. Um, for the sake of this video because I have my normal colours that I use when I do my personal paintings. But you're going to need a lot of mixing room on the palette because we're going to do a lot of blending and colour mixing. So you're going to learn lots about blending, colour mixing and we might even use a cheeky little bit of palette knife in at the end. <laughs> Just as well, I've got a jar of water here and I'm using an old tea towel to wipe my paint on. Uh, not paint, you know, like dab the brush on and stuff like that. But you can use a paper towel if you like. So for the first layers, I'm going to be using the biggest brush, which is the one stroke. And we're just going to do the background layer, which is step one. So step one is always base layer. So that is what you can see in the background of a reference photo or if you're looking at a reference, what sort of things do you want to be building on top of? So at the top we're going to have some blue, but I'm going to mix in a little bit of red. And it's very warm today here, so I've got a feeling this paint is going to dry out very quickly, which I think a lot of you guys struggle with, usually anyway. So I'm going to mix a bluey purple just with the, the blue and the red. Uh, I would say that's a bluey purple, sort of a bit in the middle. But again, this is your painting too, so you can paint with whatever colour you like. And I'm going to paste that in all along the top. Also, a little tip, seeing as it is very warm and this is going to dry quickly, is to use a little spray bottle. This is water, it just looks green because I don't know why actually. But just uh, lightly spray and mist, mist your canvas. That's quite a lot actually. <laughs> lightly mist, unlike me. And that's just going to help the paint move around and stop it from drying out so quickly. Okay, so I've got my first colour there. And I think I'm going to need a lot more paint than that, so bear with me. And whilst I'm there, I'm just going to squeeze some white out actually. I feel like I'm not very organised in this video, sorry. I thought I was, but it turns out I wasn't. Okay. So I'm going to just make some more of that colour, that same colour. Oh, I've gone a bit heavy on the red there. Come on, blue. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go back in a little bit with that. I think I'll probably need to do that layer again because it looks quite thin on the canvas. So I might have to go back in with another layer. So then moving down, I want a really nice blend to come in. So I'm gonna mix a bit more of the red in there with a little bit of the white. to create a lovely purple like that and I'm just going to bring that in below it and I'm just going side to side because we want a really nice blend and you can overlap on what you've already done as well Okay, I'm actually going to rinse my brush out because there's quite a lot of blue on there and we're starting to go into the pinks and the oranges now. So I'm just going to rinse my brush off just to try and get rid of most of that blue. And take off a lot of the water. Okay, so the next colour, I'm going to add quite a little bit more white into that. In fact, I might just create a new one down here, which feels a little bit easier. And a little bit more pink, uh, sorry, a little bit more red to make pink. Not too much red, it's quite powerful. We want that sort of like cotton candy, pastel pink feeling. And then I'm gonna take that in just below. And don't worry if it mixes in a bit, that's what we want, we want it to mix in. Another little trick you can do to blend is to go a diagonal like this and then take it back side to side and that really just gives the blend a really nice mix. I would say that's a pretty good blend. Some people are really obsessive about their blending. I'm actually not. I don't need it to be perfect. <laughs> Which is good, because I think I've just slightly ruined it. Okay, I'm happy with that. All right, rinse off your brush again. And now we're just gonna add in a hint of the yellow just to create a nice little warm glow of orange. So rinse off your brush really well and dab it so that it most of the water is off of it and then using this mixture that we've got here just add a little bit of yellow to that oh wow that's a lot okay don't add too much yellow <laughs> and i'm just gonna add a little bit more pink and a little bit more white because i don't have a lot of paint here and a bit more yellow there we go just want it like a pastel orangey pinky really really subtle and then I'm going to bring that in from the bottom it's like a peach colour oh it's so pretty and taking some of that on my brush I'm going to go ahead and bring that up like we did last time Okay, and then I'm gonna rinse my brush off. And then to finish off the base layer, I'm just gonna add a little bit more pink right along the bottom. So I'm gonna take a bit more red, add that into that mixture. And maybe a little tiny bit of yellow again to get that warm pink and then I'm going to take that in in the corners especially and along the bottom
And I'm just using a backwards and forwards motion with my brush to blend it out. Okay, base layer is done. So rinse off your brush, give it a good rinse, and this is where you can have a sip of coffee. We're going to now wait for that layer to completely dry, so you can either wait and have a moment of calm, or you could use a hairdryer bush. I didn't tell you that. So whilst that painting layer is drying, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community and it's got thousands of inspiring classes for creators so you can explore new skills and deepen existing passions and get lost in your creativity. They have videos on all kinds of different creative topics like illustration, drawing, watercolour, graphic design, photography, everything creative you can think of. A class that I recently really enjoyed was Acrylic Painting Learn the Basics for Beginners by Laurieann. She goes into light and shadow and how to use a reference photo, which makes it really great for beginners. So Skillshare is created specifically just for learning, so there are no adverts to distract you so you can stay focused on your project. And they are always launching new premium classes that look really exciting, so there's always something new to get stuck into. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box will get a free trial of the premium membership so that you can explore your creativity and see where it takes you. So the base layer is dry now. The next thing we want to do is start going in with some of the clouds. So this is going to be really fun. Uh, what size brush shall I use? I think I'm going to go for another medium which is a size 8 so it's sort of like in the middle of brush sizes and where should we start let's start let's start from the bottom this time so uh, let's get some of this dark purple color which we did which we used with the blue and the red together And using the shape of my brush, I'm kind of going to go backwards and forwards to, to create the clouds. So. so these clouds are like in the distance, so that's why they're so small. And you can add water as you go along just to keep the paint sort of like viscous and easy to put on. Okay, and as the clouds are coming up, they're getting more and more pink. So I'm just going to rinse my brush off to get some of that purple off. So that I can go in with a little bit more of a pinky color. So that means less blue, a little bit of blue, less blue, more red and a little bit of white. And I'm gonna add a tint of yellow just to warm that up and give it that peachy feel again. I think I've added a little bit too much white there. Okay, that's about right. We'll start there and then if it needs changing, that's fine. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So as the clouds get closer, like these ones are closer, they're the ones in the distance, 
Um, which I'm going to add a few little hints of this colour actually. But we want it to be less like sideways and more using the brush at all different angles. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But yeah, I'm just going to add a few hints of this pink down here as well. Yeah, what I mean is, instead of going side to side like we did here, that's sort of like when a cloud is far away in the distance, it sort of looks like a little slither, doesn't it? Like a little slice of pizza cloud. Here we want it to be more voluptuous. So I'm going to be using all different sides and shapes of my brush to really create that feeling. Also a nice little technique, brush technique, um, is instead of having a load of paint and going splodge, try and take off a lot of the paint either on your palette or on a paper towel so the end is like kind of dry. I'll show you that up close if I can. There we go. So you can see that the end of the paintbrush is like kind of dry and um, but it does have paint on it. And then you can sort of scuffle it around and that can create a really nice texture and soften the edges. It really softens it up. But don't worry about that too much because we're going to go in with a palette knife, hopefully, anyway. And it's a very similar texture, so. So I'm just sort of building up the shapes here. Okay, so what we've done on the pink, I'm going to take the purple that we used down here again and I'm just going to go on the underneath of the cloud just to give it like that nice shadow. Okay, so next we're going to make an even lighter pink with a hint of yellow. So I'm going to add some white to that and a bit of yellow to that and a little bit of water because it's getting a bit sticky. And I kind of want a really nice peachy, pinky, yellowy colour, technical term. Uh, that'll do. <laughs> and I'm now going to go above the clouds that we've done. You know what this reminds me of? There's some sort of sweet, is it called a fruit salad sweet? Like these colours just remind me of that. I feel like I can taste it. You can see me squinting, that's just because I'm looking at a little reference photo here that I'll link to in the description box. And just like we went on the bottom of the clouds, now I'm going on the top. Because this is, this is going to be like the highlight. In addition to the clouds we've done, I'm going to start taking this a little bit higher. Creating some new clouds. In fact, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to change to a small detail brush. So my smallest one I've got. In fact, I feel like my water could do a change in. Never mind. I'm going to ignore it. So yeah, I'm just going to rinse off that brush. 
uh, and carry on with these little details. So it's just a case of like building up the layers. Okay, and with those ones that we've just done, I'm gonna add in the shadows just like we did with the others, just underneath. Ah, my paint's drying. Normally, because it's quite cold in the UK, paint can stay on my palette and it'll be wet for a long time. <laughs> We're not used to this warm weather. It's just drying so fast. Now I know what you guys have to put up with all the time. <laughs> So using, I think that's it for the light mixture, like the peachy mixture. I'm going to take the darker pink now and just create some, using that scumbling method when you go directly above and sort of go around. I'm just going to add in some like, uh, like background clouds. You know, what are they called when they're like a little bit higher in the sky? I don't know the technical term, but we'll just call them background clouds for now. Okay, and using my detail brush, I'm just going to add tiny little, little clouds over like what we've sort of done because everything we've done down here has been using the bigger one. So I feel like just some little details, not loads, but just little dots here and there. We'll just add a really nice bit of detail. Something I might do, which is a bit of a risk, is add is go for like a bit more of a yellow, just in a couple places, to zing it. Add a bit of an injection of energy. So I'm going to use a, quite a yellow mixture. So it's just the same as the yellow and the red mixture, but just less white basically. And I'm just going to add in a couple places. Not a lot. I think just that, I'm not going to add much. I'm just going to leave it there. And it's nearly finished. Okay, I'm gonna wait for that to dry. Okay, so taking a cheeky little palette knife, this is a really little one, it's tiny. I think I'm gonna add in some little bit more interest in the background, just like this bit and maybe this bit. So, I'm gonna create this mixture, which is now dried. which is sort of like a pinky purple with a touch of white. Like that. Make sure um, if you're mixing with a palette knife that all the colors are fully mixed in. Otherwise you'll have a random red splodge in your sky. Uh, so I'm just gonna coat the back of the palette knife nicely like this. And, oh, this is scary. And using a circular motion, I'm gonna let the texture of the canvas pick up that paint and reveal it. So that's the plan. Let's see how it goes. Can be a little bit temperamental doing this. You never quite know what you're gonna get, but that's what's fun about it. Yeah, I'm just gonna zoom you in so you can see what I'm doing a little bit more. I'm gonna bring that down here in a sweeping motion.
And I want this to sort of feel like they are clouds that have dissipated up above. And to blend that out just a little bit more, I'm just going to use the big brush and go in a circular direction. So it sort of gives the illusion that they are like higher up in the sky and these are the forefront. So for the final detail, I just want to add a couple highlights in a much lighter colour. So I'm going to take some of the yellow and some of the pink and a little bit of the yellow. But quite a lot of white here. Just a fraction brighter than what we've got already here. I don't want it to be white, but just like an off-white with a pinky hue. And a little bit of water. And for the last stage, I just want to add in some little highlights on the clouds. Okay, so I think we're done. I think today's painting tutorial has been complete. It actually looks better than what I imagined, so that's good. So there we go. There was today's sunset painting tutorial in three easy steps. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I have tons more tutorials on my channel, so go and check out the playlist. You'll be painting for hours. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Feel free to leave a comment and let me know which tutorial you guys would like next. So I hope that you guys really enjoyed creating this painting and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.